The deadly landslide tragedy in Kerala's Wayanad has claimed as many as 355 lives. As many as 240 people still remain missing. Over 1,500 NDRF, SDRF, Army personnel are conducting search and rescue operations. The landslides in Wayanad are devastating. Landslides triggered by heavy rainfall have caused widespread destruction, wiping out entire villages and leaving a trail of destruction and collateral damage. As per reports, a total of 1,208 houses have been destroyed in the multiple landslides in the Hill District. Out of these, 540 houses were in Mundakai, 300 in Churalmala and 68 in Atamala. Around 3,700 acres of agricultural land have been swept away in the landslide, incurring a crop loss of 21.11 crore rupees. Today, we're going to take a look at some tales of loss which have occurred in this tragedy. Shokat, a 51-year-old excavator operator from Qatar, faced a devastating personal tragedy when a series of landslides struck his hometown in Vainad. As soon as he heard about the widespread destruction in Mundakai and nearby regions, he hurriedly returned home. It took him a while and a uh, complete uh, two days to get to Mundakai village, where his brothers and family members lived near each other in the same area. The landslide had washed away a major bridge on the river Iruvaziji, making it very difficult for rescuers to reach Mundaki. After several hours, some rescuers managed to get a rope across the river. The next day, the army and the NDRF teams managed to install a bridge using which he entered his relative's native village. He's constructed a two-story building to provide a comfortable life to his family. All that he witnessed upon his arrival was heavy machinery, dust, as well as rubble. He also met his family's neighbor, Mohanan, who suffered the loss of five family members in this tragedy. He had to watch the excavators painstakingly dig through the mud in search for his two brothers and 24 family members. So far, only four bodies have been recovered. He now lives with his wife and son who rushed to the hills after the first landslide. Scrambled and speechless, he expressed the sense of losing everything he ever had. His journey from Qatar to Wayanad and the heartbreaking search for his family members in the aftermath of the landslides has underscored the human cost of such events. Joining us live is Dr. S. Abhilash, Director, Reda Center, COSAT. Uh, Dr. Abhilash, a tragic uh, story emanating of uh, a family that has perished. This man rushed from Qatar to Wayanad, but what he got was only despair. Yes. Hello. Did you hear my question, Doctor? Yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah. Please uh, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, actually, this is going to be one of the worst uh, disaster in the history of uh, Western Guards, at least maybe in the last uh, five to seven decades. So the scale of this tragedy has been due to uh, multiple factors. Like though it is uh, triggered by extremely heavy rainfalls. Uh, as we know, uh, most of the landslides has been triggered due to uh, extremely rainfall events, especially along the Western Guards. But the scale and impact of uh, this damage has been due to multiple factors like fragility and the susceptibility of the region. Along with, uh, there are many, many other human interventions as well. Because though it is triggered at a, at, in the inside the forest, but the only way it finds uh, the uh, the root of this landslide debris flow has been uh, very very damaging. So uh, in the history, in 1984, there was a similar landslide occurred close to Mundagay. So that the present uh, landslide origin point is slightly above this location. So and in 2019 as well, we had a very big landslide close to this village in a place called Puttumala that is around two kilometers away. And this Puttumala, the Mundagi, all this region is sharing almost similar kind of topography. They are on the uh, two sides of the same hill. But this is the say, region where uh, Vainad, in the Vainad districts, especially in the western margin, though Vainad is a plateau, this, this is situated in the western margin of the plateau where it shares, this district is sh sharing um, the, the boundary between another district known as Manapuram district as well as Calicut district. So considering this fragility of this region, if you look at the Chalia river, which is uh, the main river in the Malapuram, Jile, uh, Malapuram uh, district, so the 25% the of this drainage uh, is coming out of 
the, this exactly, exactly from this region. And if you look at the topography, the, 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 the hills are very steep. If, if it's almost like uh, 250 meter uh, per one kilometer distance, horizontal distance. So very, very steep terrain. So that also might have uh, 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 aggravated uh, the impact because once the, 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 the soil has been saturated, with uh, enough water because if you look at the previous days uh, two days there were continuous rainfall of like 50 to 70 percentage of excess rain during those periods <coughs> so that itself could have uh, uh, saturated the top soil and the soil structure itself is it, it is a kind of mixed gravy uh, clay soil and uh, bottom there can there could be kind of uh, very uh, tiny uh, particles uh, mix up with uh, um, the already weathered rocks and all. So it, it has whole got uh, and potential to retain more water. Once this water holding capacity has been exceeded, so that, that the one that triggering precipitation, the triggering rainfall due to a kind of mesoscale mini cloudburst kind of rainfall that triggered the event. So uh, be, be, due to that, there are a lot of debris flow. So it's, it's a kind of shallow landslide. But on the, if you look at the river structure itself, the one of the river which is originating from this region, that is just rerouted because, as I told, uh, in 1984 there was there was a landslide. Maybe the river might have uh, that time the river might have took another path, and this time it might have taken its original path. On the way, this disrupted everything. And if you know, if you if you understand this, this the the some of the bodies, more than 50, 60 bodies, have been re uh, recovered, almost like 30 kilometers far away from the site. So it's a very hilly terrain, uh, and uh, the, the drainage ba basin is very big. And so many factors, uh, uh, multiple uh, together or compound together to aggravate this type of uh, uh, calamity to make it more yes. uh, damaging. Yeah. Dr. Abhilash, stay with us. In fact, uh, Shokat is not alone in his grief. A 40-year-old woman, Kalathingal Norshiba, is grappling with the devastating loss of 16 family members. She lost her husband, a mother-in-law, and two more sisters-in-law and their two children in this devastating landslide. For the past three days, Noshiba has been standing before the Mipadi Family Health Center with swollen eyes, waiting to identify the bodies of her loved ones. Each time a new body was brought in from the landslide ravaged villages or Chural Mala and Mipadi, she walked up to the makeshift pandal, hoping to find her missing family members. A body wrapped in white cloth with number 168 female child written on it in blue ink was brought in. A volunteer called for identification and she and her two daughters, Nala and Thafsina, walked up to check. The child's face was disfigured, so she looked at the leg, indicated that it wasn't her niece. At the time of the incident, she and her five brothers were staying with her father in his house in Mundakai, close to the mosque. There were 11 family members in the house and all went missing after the landslide swept away the entire house without a trace. She recounted how her father, Kunamit, mother Aisha and her two nieces, Aisha and Nafla, had been found but her brother Mansoor, his wife Mosina, and their children Shala and Shafna, her sister-in-law Sajna, were still missing. Months before this incident, the family was celebrating her niece Shala's wedding, which was fixed for September 22nd, a date that now hangs heavy with sorrow. Meanwhile, tragedy also struck this family when there was a possibility that they could have been away from all the destruction. This family in Chural Mala moved to their relative's house, fearing floods but 11 members went missing after the massive landslide hit the area. Rescue teams pulled the bodies of a two-year-old and two others from the debris and identified them, while eight others are yet to be placed. A family member, Prabhosh, said that the residents in the area suspected there was something amiss when more than the usual number of rocks accumulated in the river days before the landslide. The landslides in this rural district of Kerala have leveled houses and buried lives, leaving traumatized survivors staring at an uncertain future with their loved ones gone. Dr. Abhilash continues to be with us. Dr. Abhilash, what makes this tragedy worse is not the loss of loved ones, uh, but the fact that so many loved ones are yet to be recovered. There is no closure because so many bodies are yet yes. to be found, Dr. Abhilash. Yes, that, that, that is the main um, uh, tragedy because uh, all are wiping their... Uh, yes, because you are right, rightly uh, narrated uh, the, the situation there. 
so it, it is many bodies are still uh, buried under the soil and also it might have went to the river and uh, many body parts have been recovered from the river and uh, it is not able to unidentified so this is a situation there so i i i'm i means the two entire uh, two villages have been entirely wiped out and uh, one other village halfly uh, got its impact so this is the scale of this uh, tragedy so this this is this, uh, and another thing is that this region has got a kind of uh, history as I, i was telling it has got a kind of history of having this type of uh, uh, landslide earlier uh, uh, there itself so this time what it, it, it is uh, a little bit higher because now uh, the things are moving in the way, way that uh, it's almost like a, a rescue operation is on field but uh, i i won't think there there may be any any kind of bodies uh, still uh, any any human being still alive but otherwise it is very difficult to find out because if you look at the last 2019 um, uh, landslide in the same region Uh, more than uh, four to five bodies are yet to be identified from the same site so this is a situation of any any kind of uh, such landslide if you look at uh, the landslide which is happening in the western ghats is different from the himalayan region that is a very devastating one but uh, the scale of the impact if you look at the and compare is almost like what is happening in the himalaya it happened over a same say smaller area so that made uh, so now if if you look at the people who are living there they are going and settling over there over this region for various reasons but otherwise um, uh, the authorities because if you if you look at after the 2019 putumala landslide even the community based organization they have started uh, recording the rain uh, rain information all over the uh, district in the vinad and um, they have so after that uh, what we need is that uh, immediate action on kind of uh, decentralized people centric uh, hazard early hazard warning system by by activating the local level people to sens- sensitize the local level people give awareness among the local peoples that way vinad is moving far ahead uh, because the, uh, the uh, local ngo group has uh, st- started the lead in collecting uh, means coordinating many farmers uh, within the region they are uh, handling almost like 200 rain gauge stations over this region and if you look at the vulnerability of the region western part of this uh, uh, vinad district uh 25 to 30 percentage of this area in the western margin not the entire district the western uh, area out of that 25 percentage of that area is highly susceptible to landslide whether um, uh, it's al- almost like a, a shallow landslide yes. which is triggered by yes uh, okay part. well more stories are coming in more stories are now coming in forest officers have conducted an 8 hour operation in landslide hit vaina to rescue four toddlers and their parents belonging to a tribal community the family belonged to the paniya community of vaina they were stranded uh, in a cave atop a hill a four member team led by kalpeta range forest officer k ashish rescued the tribal family the four toddlers were aged between 1 and 4 the forest officer spotted the mother of the children wandering around atamala forest in search of food she shared how they did not have food for over 5 years Uh, five hours, beg your pardon. Uh, in fact, uh, they had normally consumed forest products and sold them in the local markets to purchase rice. However, it seemed like due to the landslide and heavy rains, they were unable to procure any food. The daring and resilient efforts were lauded by Chief Minister Pinaray Vijayan during the operation. The team encountered slippery and steep rocks and heavy showers. The toddlers warmly snuggled with the officers through this exhaustive operation. Six precious lives were saved from the remote tribal settlement. So amidst the grief Dr Bilash there are heartening stories of survival all thanks to the able rescue and relief efforts also coming in Dr Bilash yeah uh, because uh, this is this is the first time uh, especially the local rescue officer, uh, officers they are uh, um, means handling this type of situation with the i think immediately uh, with the help of uh, ndrf and the uh, army navy um, the air force uh, they are all are uh, at the site uh, to to um, build back better but it's a, it's a uh, situation uh, where uh, the, the rescue is still on there are a lot of issues facing over there the, on the ground but 
uh, anyway uh, this is already happened but uh, thing is that uh, if you look, if you look at uh, this type of natural calamities uh, in the backdrop of climate change this can happen anywhere because in the same time we are seeing this cloud burst even in the uttarakhand uh, the uh, kedarnath also so that means uh, over india entire indian region is going to be a kind of uh, Uh, disaster prone area due to uh, climate change so sir, here also the, we are witnessing that for the last 5 6 uh, years so we had a 2018 flood well, well, that that claimed almost like 400 plus people life that together it is not on a single day it is it was a accumulated to- mortality but otherwise this is the this is i think this is going to be the one of the worst hit um, natural disaster in the history of endear western guards at least for the last 5 7 decades so that is going to be the case and um, if you look at and, and it is aggravated because of the population increase as well if you look at the 1984 landslide over the same region it claimed only 18 people's life maybe that may be due to uh, not due to uh, this much settlement over this region but after after the years yeah, and years people are moving over this region and they have to move because uh, they have to find a way to way for their livelihood life and better life and all that anyway they, uh, people are moving over there but but thing is that uh, we should have a definite uh, policy making after this uh, disaster it, it would have been placed after 2019 putumala event because that time onwards there were indications of uh, this region going to be one of the um, um, sensitive area where this landslide can occur and even the local people which uh, i i already mentioned they have alerted Uh, the uh, district administration about the situation because they have recorded almost like uh, uh, 57 centimeters of rain in 2 hours so if you look at the landslide uh, calamity it is mainly because triggered by the rainfall so the rainfall recorded over last uh, uh, previous 2 days was of the order of 57 centimeters it is kind of extremely heavy rainfall so that is what some indications were there and uh, considering the uh, proximity and the a susceptibility of this region they have this local group have in, has uh, uh, informed the district administration about the because uh, the limitation of any landslide has had early warning system is that we cannot pinpoint the exact point where it is going to happen we can give a kind of regional warning to the local people based on that uh, risk analysis risk assessment Uh, with available data and all we have to identify certain critical zones where this type of rainfall is going to happen yes. or if that threshold is exceeding okay. we have to initiate this rescue operation all right Not dr abilash we have to leave it at that yeah. appreciate you joining us with your perspective on that big story let's also bring in now another special guest joining us live sonam wangchuk is live with us innovator and activist sonam wangchuk welcome thank you so much for being with us today the landslides in bynard have claimed more than 300 lives till now what message will you give to the people of kerala this is a very trying time for them my uh, sympathies and empathy with them uh, because they have become victims of uh, something that is on one hand happening at global scale they are not to blame it's uh, a thing um, that we are causing to our planet with our lifestyles whether they are in new delhi new york london beijing so people in hills like wayanad or ladakh have to bear the consequences so i feel very sad about that if we then uh, use the you know policies that are not adhered to policies are not particularly um, short of in our country they are good but then when it comes to execution they are not adhered to and often we do things in places that are fragile hills like uh, wide roads and blind you know development of uh, cities and hotels and all such things that are in the fragile areas like flood paths so these then cause such uh, mishaps that innocent people have to bear the consequences right uh, you know in your assessment did unchecked rise in construction and tourism lead to this tragedy not 
uh, sure about why not. I'm told that that's one of the big reasons. But mm -hmm. I see in the Himalayas how, you know, people who have business interests, vested interests, and um, leaders who support them or who get their support um, do things as if there's no tomorrow. You know, that uh, you benefit from these today and then um, our elections happen only every five years, but people who live in the local areas have to bear the consequences for generations. So, therefore, I think wherever um, such uh, unchecked development should not happen, there should be a system in place and that should be adhered to strictly. We should learn from uh, countries like Chile, who are so particular about, you know, it's a very disaster-prone country, but the losses are so minimal. That's mainly because um, of how they take the policies, uh, not because they have better policies than us. They really stick to those and um, that uh, pays them back in times of disasters. Right. Uh, Ms. Wangchuk, how can we balance economic interest with ecological interest? I think that's a, a very important balance that needs to be maintained. But how do we do it, according to you? So this is one of the biggest problems because we see the current gains, profits for, you know, businesses and companies. And we don't see the long term consequences like in the Himalayas also. Um, businesses come, set up their industries and exploit the natural resources, make the ecology poorer and uh, hills and, um, you know, the landscape weaker for such disasters. And then when disaster strikes, they are not there. You know, it's the government who has to use taxpayers' money to repair things. This is very unfair. So when we allow allow any such people or businesses to profit from these, we must see the long-term consequences and make it that much more difficult for them. But unfortunately, that's one shortfall of democracy. Our leaders, our officers do not see beyond five years and such things do not happen in five years. They happen in, you know, 20 years, 30 years. So we have to have uh, better systems that are adapted to the realities of nature rather than our five yearly election cycle. Yes. OK, tourism now is one of Kerala's biggest sources of income. What can be done to promote sustainable tourism, sir? Yes. So tourism on one and is a great blessing for people in faraway places, but then it has to be limited so that its um, damages do not outweigh the benefits. So whether it is in numbers or in the way tourism is conducted, you, know, you can't have the same um, life as in big cities uh, in the faraway remote tribal hills. You have to adapt to the way uh, people have adapted to those landscapes and make that a learning uh, point for those who visit. They should visit to learn from uh, the differences that such places uh, require from people and how they live. So, therefore, there should be checks on tourism, right. whether it is Ladakh or Wayanad. We shouldn't, uh, you know reap benefits or rather exploit today and pay for it in long term. That's what's happening. And I've seen it here in our mountains also. So better balance of what lies tomorrow. Now, this is difficult for people and businesses to do because they are carried away by the, you know, short term gains. It's for the government to regulate these. And that's exactly why we uh, nominate or elect governments so that they show us the way by framing policy. Appreciate you joining us uh, with your perspective on that big story. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.